In today's video, we'll be replacing the 5-way valve actuator on a 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance. To guide this process, I'm following the Tesla service procedure for dual motor vehicles. A link to that documentation is included in the video description. This is on its face a very simple job. However, the presence of the front motor increases the complexity drastically. Step 1. Remove the second row seat cushion. Reach under the front edge and push the two small black plastic release tabs towards the left-hand side of the vehicle. This will release the seat bottom, allowing the seat to fold up, revealing the 12 volts and high voltage connections. Step 2. Remove the underhood storage unit. Start by opening the frunk. Remove the upper apron and cabin air duct. Then pull up on the frunk latch cover to expose a wiring harness. Disconnect the harness by pulling it out gently. Use a 10 mm socket and ratchet to remove the 7 bolts securing the frunk tub. Once the bolts are out, pull up on the edges of the tub to release the plastic clips. Carefully lift and remove the entire storage unit from the vehicle. Step 3. Disconnect the 12V power. Begin by turning off the AC and rolling down all of the windows, then open both rear doors. Next, navigate to the safety menu on the vehicle display and scroll to the bottom where you will find power off. Press this button and the button on the pop-up to power off the vehicle. Once several minutes have passed, remove the negative terminal from the 12-volt battery with a 10 millimeter socket and secure it so it doesn't contact the chassis. Next, move to the right side of the second row and remove the foam insulation panel. You'll see a connector. Push outward on the tab, then rotate the handle fully down. Finally, pull upward to disconnect the plug. Step 4. Remove the nuts that connect the super bottle to the brace. Locate the two nuts above and below the heat exchanger block. Use a 10 mm socket to remove them. Be careful not to drop the nuts when removing them. Step 5. Remove the two 13 mm bolts connecting the battery bracket to the shock tower brace, which are seen here and here. Step 6. Remove the inner bolts holding the brace to the right-hand shock tower. The bolts can be seen here and here. A 15 mm socket will be needed to remove the bolts. Step 7. Remove the outer bolt connecting the brace to the right-hand shock tower. The bolt can be seen here and is removable with a 15 mm socket. Step 8. Remove the inner bolts holding the brace to the left-hand shock tower. The bolts can be seen here and here. Step 9. Remove the outer bolt connecting the brace to the left-hand shock tower. The 15 mm bolt can be seen here. Step 10. Release the shock tower brace. Tesla recommends using inflatable jacks to lift it safely. However, I did not have those at my disposal, so I used wood shims to lift the brace instead. Step 11 and 12. State to release the clip that attaches the battery return hose to the super bottle 
and release the clip attaching the actuator harness to the super bottle. These clips can be seen here. However, I found them difficult to remove, so I left them in place during my repair. Step 13. Disconnect the electrical harness from the five-way valve actuator connector. The harness can be seen here. Depress this tab and gently pull the connector downward to disconnect. Step 14. Remove the three T20 Torx screws holding the five-way valve actuator to the valve cover. The bottom of the valve actuator can be seen here. For reference, here is the same section on the new and old part. I found the removal of these screws to be very challenging due to the front motor and was only able to remove the screws once I had acquired a low-profile bit driver as shown below. This one was purchased from Lowe's for $16. I suggest to kneel in front of the vehicle and place both hands under the super bottle, utilizing one hand to find the screw and the other hand to manipulate the bit driver. This will require many small movements, but eventually the screws will come out. Step 15. With the screws removed, slide the old actuator down and out. Step 16 reads, align the larger stem shell shaft spline with the larger recess on your new part. Allow me to explain what this means. The valve spline is made such that one of the four sections of the spline is thicker than the others in order to ensure that the valve spline and actuator are only capable of mating one way. Thus, the valve spline must be aligned with the receiving section on the new part. At Tesla service centers, this is done with a specialized diverter valve wrench. However, I was not able to get Tesla to supply me this part, and as a result, I found this step incredibly challenging. In order to understand how the valve spline needs to be manipulated, look at the new and old valve actuators as seen here. The old actuator is shown on the left and the new is on the right. You will need to identify the thicker spline receiving slots in the two actuators. Here, the old actuator has the thicker spline in the bottom left, and the new actuator has the thicker spline in the top left. Thus, the valve spline will need to be rotated 90 degrees clockwise, as shown with this thin piece of plastic that I initially attempted to use to manipulate the valve spline. I tried many ways to do this, but ultimately I found the most success with utilizing a small PVC end cap that I dremeled across into. I also sanded the sides in order to increase grip on the PVC end cap as it was quite challenging to turn the valve spline and I needed as much grip as I could get. I highly suggest investing in the tool you create for turning the valve spline as I did not and deeply regretted it. Once you have your tool created, I found the most successful approach to be to turn the valve spline gradually, inspect the orientation of the spline utilizing your front-facing camera like you see on screen now and repeat until it is in the intended location. Once you believe it is in the correct location, slide the new valve actuator into place and if you have done it correctly, the two will mate easily. Do not force the valve actuator onto the spline. Step 17. Install the three T20 Torx screws that attach the five-way valve actuator to the valve cover. Take care to not drop any of the screws. Step 18. Reconnect the electrical harness to the actuator. The harness can be seen near my hand in this shot. Step 19. Install the clip that attaches the electrical harness to the left-hand side of the super bottle. Step 20. Install the clip that attaches the return hose to the super bottle. Step 21. Deflate and remove the airbag or shim used to lift the shock tower brace. Steps 22 through 25. Instruct you to install and tighten the shock tower brace bolts in sequence. Allow me to propose an alternative method. I found it best to start by installing all six bolts hand tight to allow for proper alignment. Once they're all in place, use a 15 millimeter socket to snug them down evenly, then torque them to spec. Step 22. 
Step 26. Install the bolts that attach the battery bracket to the shock tower brace with a 13 mm socket. Step 27. Install the nuts that attach the super bottle to the shock tower brace you may find that a metal insert has come out of the area that the nut should be installed in. This insert can be simply shoved back inside the rubber boot and around the bolt. The nut can then be simply screwed on. In my case, the metal insert was still in place on the bottom bolt, so the nut was simply hand-threaded on and then tightened down with a 10 millimeter socket. Step 28. Connect the 12V power. This is done by first plugging in the power connector in the rear of the vehicle on the right-hand side. To plug in the connector, gently place the harness in the receiver and push down slightly while rotating the handle up until it clicks into place. Then reinstall the negative terminal on the 12V battery using a 10 mm socket. Step 29. Reinstall the underhood storage unit. This is done by first placing the storage unit into the front compartment. Take care to ensure the hood latch cover harness is threaded through the underhood storage unit before fully seating it. Once the harness is in position, push down around the edge of the underhood storage unit to engage the clips. The seven bolts which hold down the storage unit should then be installed with a 10 mm socket. Next, the hood latch cover should be plugged into the harness and can be reinstalled into the storage unit by sliding it down into place. Finally, the cabin air intake and the apron can be installed. Step 30. Install the second row lower seat cushion. Thread the seat belt buckles through the openings, position the seat cushion connection tabs above the receptacles, and push the cushion down until it clicks into place. That completes the five-way valve actuator replacement on a 2018 Tesla Model 3 performance.